Welcome while you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we want to wish you yes. a blessed Amen. Easter Amen. Monday. We're so excited. We certainly would love to hear from you. So today, we're taking your comments and your questions from our viewers. You're watching It's Monday, and we are live, and we are extra live because we are in this season of Easter, mm -hmm. and we are glad to be here. Give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you are calling and you are outside mm -hmm. North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at ewtn.com. Mm -hmm. And check us out on Facebook. Well, the question for today's show is this. What does the saying... We are an Easter people, and hallelujah, hallelujah is our song, Mean to You. Yeah. And who said that? Who was the first pope John to say Paul that to us? John Paul II is known to have said that, but when he said that, it was in quotations. Mm -hmm. So it may not be original with him. It may have been St. Augustine that said something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a little confusing, but John Paul II said it, but he may have been quoting somebody else. Yes. So we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song, as you said. Mm -hmm. What does this mean to you? Um, and also, so we want you to call us, and we want you to communicate with us and say, this is what that means to me as I live my life. But also, you could just share, you could call in and just say, hey, th this was my Easter season, or this was the Trinity and what it meant to me. These were the highlights for me. You know, this is the, the power and grace that I've received through the liturgies of the church. So you can do that as well. Also go to EW10.com slash Easter, www ew10.com forward slash Easter. It's a special site. They're all about Easter, mm, what it yes. is, how we should be participating, and so on. So th there's so much educational material that EW10 is putting out for each one of the seasons, and that's a great one for Easter. And I hope you kept your dial on EWTN over Holy Thursday and Good Friday Amazing. and beautiful Holy Saturday, um, and, and then especially Easter Sunday. The coverage, the shows that they played. Um, yeah, we watched programs. a couple of movies, a yeah. couple of, with the programs and stuff that they had, and then how they brought us the mass yeah. from Rome, and then also the mass from Jerusalem, Jerusalem and Cathedral. then the mass from Virginia, <laughs> right? In yeah. Washington. Washington. So it was, it was just beautiful. Was. And we had, and in the midst of our Holy Week, we had two funerals that we, we had to attend. Yeah. So Good Friday, it, Good and, Friday and, and Holy Thursday. You had to yeah. go to one on Holy Thursday. Yeah. And so it was, uh, it was a very full Holy Week. Yes. And I personally was very ready for Easter. Yeah. Lent is 40 days, but Easter, the whole season of Easter is 50 days. Right. We get 10 extra days right. to be full of joy, full of hope, yeah. full of light. Yeah full of trust and faith in God. Yeah. And if you waning and you're getting weary, say, Lord, fill me with your power. Fill me with your hope. Fill me with your joy. And light the fire of Christ inside of Amen. me. Amen. 50 days of Easter. And then we have the ascension in there. And of course, those 10 days, 9 to 10 days, that, that novena getting ready for Pentecost, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. This is a great time. It doesn't mean that we deny the tribulations in our lives and the sufferings of our life. But Jesus said, you be of good cheer. In this world, you will have tribulation, but you be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. What does the saying, we are an Easter people or a resurrection people, and hallelujah is our song. What does that mean for us through the joys and the sufferings and the pains and the losses uh, in the midst of the life that we lead? that Christ has conquered sin, Satan, death, and that the ultimate outcome is life. Mm. Life in him, eternal life, everlasting life in Jesus Christ. We want to know the fellowship of your sufferings, Lord, as St. Paul said, that we too might know the resurrection like yours unto eternal life. 1-800-221-9460, 1-800-221-9460. Or call us now. Let us know what that phrase means to you. Or just talk to us about the blessings of, of this Easter for you. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your comments and your questions on our show. So if you're watching, it's Monday and we are very alive, thanks Amen. be to God. You can give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. Outside North America, you can reach us at 205-271-2980. You can always send us a comment with a question. Um, at Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So this was the question that went out to you. What does the saying, we are an Easter people and hallelujah is our song mean to you? We certainly would love to hear from you. So please give us a jingle. We would love to hear your comments, your question about it, how that worked out in your life or it didn't. We would love to hear yeah, well, from you. Or if you just want to speak about how you were touched during the Easter celebration, yes. the vigil mass, or you've come into the church and your excitement about mm -hmm. being a Catholic, about being a disciple of Jesus Christ, maybe you were newly baptized. And so we had, you know, s several but, adult mm -hmm. people, and one was a young boy, like yeah. eight, eight or so, but to see adults, you know, there was a time it seemed like everybody was kind of like baptized, Protestant or cat, whatever it is, and so many people that are not baptized. Right. And so, they're coming, they're inquiring. We should expect not five people, but hundreds and thousands of people, like, like the beginning of the gospel when St. Peter preached. So much was happening on, on this day after the resurrection. Yes. Thousands were coming. Mm -hmm. And what do you think happened to them? They were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That name, they were baptized. And their little ones with them, they right. were baptized. So they all became part of that family of God. And so we should expect baptisms to be taking place and, and people to be coming into the church more than ever before. This is a part of what it means to be an Easter people, yes. a resurrection people. These people that were disciples, apostles, locked up into the room, they didn't want to come out, and Jesus passes through the door, and you know they're filled with guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. He forgives them. See my hand, see my side. Don't be uh, faithless. Don't but, be afraid. But be believing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And we, as a people of God, we need not to be afraid. You know, we participated in um, all of the masses. We went to um, Holy Thursday, Monday Thursday, and which was Good absolutely Friday. beautiful. Was. Good Friday. We did the veneration of the cross. And we were there like hours, you know. And in between that, we did two burials. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, but we were in church and yeah. we go to the cathedral at downtown. Bishop Raker was there and he did an outstanding, beautiful job. Yeah. Um, Father Justin Ward and our priest, Father Jerebic, yeah. outstanding. The choir was par excellence, the okay. incense. Now, I'm a convert, <sighs> and I love, I, I mean, I hope I never in my living here on earth never miss a Saturday night vigil, ever. I yeah. never want to miss that. You take your watch off. I take my watch <laughs> off because I'm going into a realm where it's timeless for me. And I don't want to know the time. I just want to be, I want to be yeah. full of joy. I want to enter in and everything. And I don't want any restrictions. I just, <laughs> and it is beautiful. It starts at eight. And yeah. it starts at eight and you know, the fire outside and then we come in and the church is pitch black and we're lighting. And I mean, the symbolism of everything and the reality of what it is. Jesus has come to dispel the darkness. Amen. So how does that get real for you and yeah. me? You have darkness in your life. Jesus is the light of the world and he's come to dispel your darkness and my darkness. And then he wants to set our hearts on fire, totally set our little hearts on fire. So then we are going to go and tell somebody what Jesus did for you, yeah. right? We all, you know, I've been saved. I am saved. I am being saved every single day. And remember, and I said this in the beginning of Lent, you know what the end game of Lent is? to be more like Jesus and less like you. More like Jesus and less like you. And I hope over that 40 days, and I was really glad yeah. to see Lent go. I was happy yeah. when Lent was over. I was ready to enter in to the triduum, go through those three days. Yeah. My heart was excited, I wanted to do that. But even Friday, I mean, you know how you, it's more than what you feel, it's what you know, it's what you believe. It's what our Lord experienced, and you yeah. enter in in that suffering. Yeah. Well, it's the two sides of the coin. You have to have the jo uh, have the suffering, but then you're going to get the joy. But that's all life. We have joy and suffering in every single day of this journey, and we need to do this better, 
more full of hope. We need not to be afraid. And now we need to go and tell somebody. We had the readings this morning, right, where um, in the gospel lesson where they, they were going to pay all of the Jewish people. They paid the, the um, guards. The guards. Yeah. The, all the Jewish community paid the guards, body the Pharisees. Yeah. Stop. Just tell them they stole the body. Guess what? The body was not stolen. It was not stolen. That was a lie, and we dispel that lie, and we keep telling the truth. But in order for this truth to go forward, you and I have to tell the truth now, today, what Jesus did yeah. for you today in 2023, Amen. so you can be full of hope. And you got something to tell. Everybody has a little sphere of influence. I have brothers and sisters, and they're all in different parts of their journey. But guess what they do? They call me for prayer. I don't have any, I, all I have is Jesus. And I, now the older that I'm getting, I'm proclaiming him more and more. Jesus can help you. You need to pray. I will pray for you. My sister last night called and said to me, pray with me over the phone. I prayed with her over the phone. My other sister, my brother. That's what we're supposed to do. Your sphere of influence, make your faith matter in their lives. And so that's, that's the question. What does it mean to be an Easter people? You just heard it and you're seeing it. That's what it means for Joy to be an Easter person is that as those ladies as well, when Jesus rose, they did him homage and then they ran. They ran and told the apostles. They ran and they told other pieces, people. When, when Peter was reconciled, so to speak, to the Lord, then he stood up and said, you killed the Lord of life. Oh my gosh, at the risk of his own life, now repent and believe. Even now, may God fill you with the power of the resurrection. Jesus is truly risen from the dead. It's not just a, a spiritual resurrection in our hearts. No, he literally, we believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting, that this one who's been resurrected is coming again to be the judge of the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not have an end. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I believe. Here's a comment, Joy. It said, we have been saved. Christ has given his life and has risen from the dead. We sing hallelujah, God be praised, and that's right. from Nancy right. on Facebook. Yeah. We either believe that or we don't. I mean, otherwise, you're just, it's in your head. It's a cerebral experience. You, it's a story. It's a nice story. But are you having the encounter with a living God? It matters what happens, what happened 2,023 years ago happened to Jesus. It matters for all eternity. And you and I, it is our hope and our joy that we are going to see Jesus face to face and spend eternity with him. Yeah. We die to ourselves and we live for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the greatest thing you and I have to remember is we cannot be afraid. The world is really bold yeah. in proclaiming their lies. We have to be really bold in telling the truth in love and just saying, I have an answer for you. I, I know, I know Jesus and he can help you. Can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. Or just ask somebody, is there anything going on in your life that I can pray about? Because I want to pray because I could take it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. And with the great hope that something beautiful is going to happen to yeah. you. You know, Joy, you're speaking about courage and we're speaking about being an Easter, a resurrection people. And so we're, we're people of, of joy, you know, and, and not only emotion, but joy is, is walking in the way of the Lord, being in his way. And we know that the outcome of everything that's going on in this world is already secured in Jesus Christ. We don't see it all now. It's like being on a tra trapeze, you know, you're swinging <laughs> on it and then you let go. You got to let go so you can get to the other one. We're in that in-between time, but we mm -hmm. know Christ has already gone from this place. He's grabbed that, and we, in him, are a resurrection people. Yeah. And so the outcome is secure. It doesn't look like it's all secure, and, and there's a lot of suffering and sorrow, and people are suffering all over the world for the name of Christ, and things are heating up in the United States of America, uh, those who are dedicated to being Christians, Catholic people. Uh, but we should be courageous. Right. Courageous people is a part of being that... Uh, people of God, the uh, Alleluia people, right. the Easter people, right. that we're, we're filled with courage. It doesn't mean that we don't have fear. I mean, you can't have courage without fear. We have fear, but we're not going to let that overtake us. We are people of courage. We are people of hope, a comment here. We're people of hope in any situation because we remember what happened on Easter morning all those years ago. Mm. No matter how dark the world seems, we know that Jesus Christ is truly risen, even as he said, and he lives today.
like that song says, he lives, yeah, he yeah. lives, mm -hmm. Christ Jesus lives today and he walks with me and he talks with me mm -hmm. and, he, and he shows his face to me in the Holy Eucharist. You know, we can see Jesus now, not only in the second coming, but Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he didn't. He's with us always in the Holy Eucharist. What a great faith. What a great faith. What does it mean for you to be an Easter person and to sing Alleluia, which means praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So many have been martyred on their lips. Praise the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. I praise the Lord because nothing will separate me from the love of God. That's what it means to be an Easter people. You're suffering now. You've been betrayed. You got a terrible diagnosis. You're very healthy, but something's going on with your child. And you do feel fearful. You have to remind yourself, I'm a resurrection person. Mm -hmm. I'm an Easter person. I I'm not, God didn't say I'll live all my life here on earth. I'm a mortal person. But death only has this life. I will have all eternity with him in my baptism, in my radical identification with Christ in his death. By God's grace and mercy, I will be raised up. I'm saved. I'm being saved. By God's mercy, I will be saved. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants for your life. He doesn't want that anybody should perish, but all turn to him and have everlasting life. And he's given us the church. Come home to the church if you're away from the church. Look again. See again. This is the new evangelization that you hear again, you that were in relationship, but you're not in relationship anymore. Take another look at the beauty mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ and the good things and the beauty within the church. Now is the time to come home yes. before Christ's return, before something happens to you and you get that diagnosis and you might pass away. This isn't the end of the story. No. The story goes on into mm -hmm. eternity. It's heaven or it's hell. Right. It's the resurrection to eternal life or resurrection to eternal death. So choose life and live. Well, and the beautiful journey of our church in this Easter week that we're experiencing, then next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. Yeah. where So you, in this week, maybe you need to start praying for people who need to come back to the church. You need to start praying for your spouse. You need to start praying for your children who have lost their way. Your co-workers, people who are suffering mm -hmm. that you know about. You know, I don't know about all your troubles. You don't know about all my troubles. But the deal is we know who we can go to. That's we right. can go to Jesus. We can say, Lord, pray for me in this situation. Call on all the saints who have suffered and run their race. They want to be a prayer partner with you. They want to come up alongside of you and say, be of good cheer. Don't be discouraged. We, and we get discouraged and we get hopeless when we keep our eyes on the problem. And you know, I, I'm a cancer survivor, and I know that if I kept my eyes on cancer, I don't know what would have happened. Mm -hmm. I did everything the doctors told me to do, and I've told you this before, but I went to the Eucharist. I was a daily communicant. And you know, when I came into the church those many years ago on a Saturday night, I was like, wait a minute, I can receive Jesus every day? And as Catholics, you can. I was a daily communicant. I said, this is unbelievable. We have to do this because he wants to fill you. He mm. wants to empower you. He wants to equip you. You don't have to do this alone. God wants to help you and he wants to walk with you. Here's another comment. It says, Easter is a reminder that we can find happiness again, mm. even when it feels like we lost everything. Jesus has overcome death and lives and reigns forever. And he offers us joy and peace now and for all eternity. Yeah. And this is from Sandy on Facebook. Yeah. And we as a people of God, we just have to choose to believe that or not. Mm. That's all. We just have to say, Lord, I believe. Or, and if you're faithless, say, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, help my unbelief that I would cry out to you. And if you're waning in trust and hope and joy and peace and the fruits of the Spirit, there may be rotten in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you yeah. afresh and anew and to make you alive again, that your fruit would be luscious and beautiful and delicious so that others would want it. Yeah. If you have no faith, cry out to God. He will give you more faith. He just does that. He doesn't want you to be faithless. He doesn't want you to be hopeless. He doesn't want you to be joyless. And he wants you to be wise 
wise and discerning. So ask the Lord and on yeah. this beautiful time of Easter that we have 50 days of Easter, every day that God would speak something new to you, that you would explode with great love. Just tell the Lord all day long how much you love him. Just keep saying it and your heart will change. It will change your brain and it will change your heart and your spirit. In the midst of the difficulty say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Say it now. I believe, Lord. At the same time, I feel like I, I don't believe. He, he understands that. And let him do a great work in you. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show on this beautiful Easter Monday, we're going to go to Rome to check in with Joan Lewis. Happy Easter, Joan. What's happening in Rome today? Well, Easter greetings, Jim and Joy, from my home to yours. Today, of course, in Italy is Pasquetta. Now, that means Little Easter, and it is a huge national holiday. More than anything, it's a big day for families as they gather around the principal event of the day, which is a long festive meal. And of course, when weather cooperates, that usually takes the form of a picnic. And I have to tell you, the numbers of families and children that I've seen in the last two days certainly warm the cockles of your heart and bring a, a smile to your face. And I have to say, numbers were also big at the Pope's Mass of the Resurrection yesterday, Easter Sunday. An estimated 45,000 People attended Mass, and easily twice that were there for the traditional Irby and Orby blessing. Now, Irby and Orby means to the city and to the world, and this is a blessing that is usually given at Christmas and at Easter. And, of course, the square yesterday after intermittent days of cold weather and rain was blessed with sunshine, so another highlight of the day. But I have to say there were almost as many flowers uh, in the square as there were faithful flowers from the Netherlands. 35,000 flowers, shrubs, plants, etc. Now this is, um, this offering from the Dutch florist is a tradition that began in 1985 when Pope St. John Paul beatified Dutch Carmelite father Titus Bransma. Now yesterday's Mass, of course, was presided over by Pope Francis, and he did not deliver a homily, this is traditional, as he had already given his reflections at the Vigil Mass, the, the preceding evening, of course. Now, <clears throat> uh, 300 priests, 15 bishops, and 31 cardinals did con celebrate at the Mass, but it was Cardinal Giovanni Battista Rey, who is Dean of the College of Cardinals, who actually presided at the Mass at the altar given uh, the Holy Father's continuing mobility issues. Pope Francis had some very special words in his lengthy Irby and Orby address. Let me read just a few. He, um, he began by announcing the joyous message of this day when we proclaim that Christ is risen. In Jesus, he said, the passage of humanity from death to life, from sin to grace, from fear to confidence and desolation to communion has been made. And this means that humanity's journey has a sure footing in hope and therefore can move forward with confidence in facing the many challenges now and ahead. The Pope said, the Lord has built us a bridge to life in defeating death, making it for us the most important and beautiful day of history. And you know what? On those important and beautiful words, it's back to you. Thank you so much for that wonderful sharing, Joan. Again, the phrase, you're an Easter person. You're not a, you don't have the spirit of fear. You'll be resurrected with Christ into eternal life by his grace and mercy and by your yes to him. Don't be afraid. You're an Easter person. Get a new song in your heart, a resurrection song in your heart. Hallelujah, praise be to you, Lord, in life and in death. 
for better or worse, for richer or poor, Lord, I love you. I'm an Easter person. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May it be yours. Mm. May it be to the ones that you, you're praying for, that you're crying about, your circumstance, your situation. Jesus is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.